Companies uh, are stepping up benefits for fertility and adoption coverage in recent years, but those reproductive benefits don't cover all workers, especially uh, equally, especially male same-sex couples. And Courtney Reagan joins us now with more. Hey, Courtney. Hi. Good morning, Joe and Becky. So 40% of U.S. employers offered some type of fertility benefits in 2022. That's up from 30% in 2020. But many policies exclude same-sex couples. We were shocked uh, when we started to look into it and realized nothing is covered by insurance unless you can prove that you're infertile. The first step for us uh, was to get our sperm tested. And um, for us, that was the only part of the process that was covered through our insurance. Well, 63% of LGBTQ plus individuals plan to become parents. Only 10% of employers offer a surrogacy benefit. For those that do, a $10,000 reimbursement for eligible expenses is most common, according to experts. The average cost of surrogacy has gone from $75,000 five years ago to anywhere between one hundred and fifty and $250,000. Surrogacy comes with a lot of added costs beyond the IVF cycle, like lawyers' fees, all expenses, compensation, insurance for the carrier, donor eggs, since gay men can't biologically provide them. Will Porteous is a father through gestational surrogacy. Before, he worked at Fertility Benefits Manager Maven as its chief growth officer. He and his husband's parenthood journey cost nearly $175,000, but he doesn't think employers need to offer full coverage. The expectation is to have equitable support to your other coworkers and seeing that your employer cares about that journey. A new survey of the LGBTQ community by Fertility Benefits Manager Progeny shows 79% would consider leaving their current job for one that offers better fertility and family building benefits. The subset of the population that utilizes the benefits are, are significantly um, uh, more loyal to the company and stay with the company. Executives from Kind Body and Carrot say they often field calls from prospective employees wanting details about these types of benefits before accepting a job. In the intro, we talked about adoption services, but we, you didn't really mention anything. What, what goes into, what are the expense? I was adopted, so long ago, yeah. uh, you know, in the Stone Age, but what, what, what's involved? So adoption is quite complicated. Um, it can cost anywhere when you're talking about a non-foster care system adoption between twenty-five and sixty thousand dollars on average. It can be much more. There are also a number of states. I think there's thirteen states that make it much harder for same-sex couples to adopt a child. Um, there's a matching process. There's no guarantee. Yeah. It can take years. And we actually did ask a number of the people that we spoke to about this, although. Um, you were adopted, of course, and so I know, I know you, you know a lot about this personally, but it can also be a touchy question to ask people that want to have children because they also want to have biological children. And so it is a difficult choice, and neither one is easy. Both are very expensive, and there are no guarantees, the surrogacy or adoption.